So let's talk about 3D printing. So I was able to go to a website and I'll post the link below to printables.com. On printables.com, they have a plethora of files that are available to you that have different types of creative common licenses. So some things that you can fix or hack or change, some stuff that it's uh, up to you that you could even sell personally and some stuff that you can't, uh, the maker doesn't want you to work like that. It also has a tipping feature, sort of like what you can do on say Discord or Twitch or YouTube, uh, Instagram, you know, the social media channels. You can support different designers for the makes that they do. It's a pretty incredible community and I would suggest uh, checking them out. They're not even sponsoring my video. I'm just a uh, an active user on <clears throat> on the site. You can follow the 3D fleet. Um, in this case, I found fingerboard objects and wanted to scale them up because I uh, have ran into prior instances where some of the features are not in scale. Cool. Look at this. My print just finished. So, fingerboarding. We printed it at a 1,000% print speed, and it took 39 hours and 12 minutes to do. We're going to get the option. When I upgrade the nozzle head to 0.6, we're going to make this time cut down by a third. The most exciting part. Hold on. Let's see if I can do this while holding my phone. So we take it off the bed. Oh, look at that. Okay. Oh, so cool, nice and shiny. Now, up here, this all occurred because it was difficult for the machine to start to bridge, but it's a very easy cleanup with a tool like this. This is called a, deburr a deburring tool and the blade is pretty sharp and then you can run it with its edge and it cleans off the plastic. I'll post a link to this below in the description box so you can look into getting one of these. Let's get back to pulling parts off the bed. Oh, so satisfying. Oh, and the texture, it's gonna look great for my galaxy park. A little bit of issue but again we're not worried about it it's fun it's it's for fingerboarding if anything it fits into the characteristics of skateboarding you just work with what you got we got some guitar pick cards let's pull those off oh okay come on there we go simple clean design and you can play your instrument with this let's get the last one Give it a little force and flex. Nice, and I, you can see my I use my machine. You know, I, like I said, I have over two thousand hours into this this machine, and even with the hot plate like this, there's some tricks. Um, some people take blue painters tape and cover the bed again. Actually, if you've got an idea, feel free to leave it in the comments below. Let me know what you think you would do. A lot of people now the uh, sorry the servos are disabled so I can move the machine. So we press finished and we press home and now I want to re-level the bed. So I'm going to go to settings, leveling, start. And as you can see, 40 hours just finished printing. I'm not going to turn it off. What I'm doing is I'm going to re-level the bed. And then in the next part, we're going to slice a file to print one more time. We're going to stay with copper. Copper. Wow. My quarter pipe. Guitar picks. The print so far. 39 hours and 6 minutes in. 5 minutes left to go. We're printing it at 1,000%. Some of this bottom surfacing, I'm not worried. 
I actually believe I'm gonna use the bump. I'm gonna use this bump and mold it so I can ca cast some more parts. But this machine is killing it. As you can see, this is my filament roll and it goes to its sensor, which comes down to the extruder. The extruder is also the hot end. It's all a direct drive. The next plan with this machine is to change the nozzle head to 0.6 so that this print speed for the object size will probably get cut down by at least a third of the time. Um, I plan to post that video on how to do that minor maintenance upgrade on the next video. YouTube, what up? Today we're gonna to be looking at how I 3D print. It's turning out pretty rad. Right now on my machine, we're running a copper. It's an Amazon basic filament, PLA. 1.75 millimeter and it's a great material it's been proving itself to really work well in my Corality Ender S1 Plus yeah this machine is incredibly reliable I can't stress enough how accurate and consistent it is when I start any of my prints so I've had the machine now for a little over two months. I think I've ran it for a good 1500 hours and we're still getting nice results. All of this sort of adhesion that didn't go well on the bed, I'm not too concerned about because this is a, a prototype that I'm gonna use for a master mold. Um, and it's just part of my process. It's allowing the job to be completed versus focusing completely on perfection. Uh, I find it to be more of a wabi-sabi when you allow the tool to kind of create whatever it's creating. It's, it's more of a mantra. You know, you can still create small objects that have a really great feel from the machine. This is just an example of some of the stuff that we make at the 3D fleet. We also make those wheels so it can go into stuff like this. As you can see, it's got holes. So we, we are focusing on creating fun, functional collector's items, artifacts, if I may. Um, anywho, let's jump back into 3D printing. may want to go grab a razor blade actually. Oh, there we go. Come on, sucker. Now all that nasty stringing can go away. There's another way with, um, some people use a hairdryer to heat the plastic back up and that helps. I've seen that done a bunch, but I really trust in this little tool. They're pretty inexpensive. All right, back to deburring. I really like this little tool. This guy. It's pretty inexpensive from Amazon. Um, I'm sure you could probably find one at, at like a craft store locally if you wanted to go that route. I decided to go with Amazon just because of my time. And it works pretty, pretty nicely. It really does a great job of like cleaning up some of the excess plastic off of the print. Now this line may be trickier with this. It may not really fit. So 
We'll just use like a standard razor blade for this part. Let's grab one real quick, a little blade action. There's a lot of ways to finish the print as they say. Post, post process is a term some use, post process. So we're kind of like doing the cleanup that we think it's, that we believe is necessary. So a couple more tools, I got a little scraper here. And then I really like using straight blade, straight blade razors. And you basically just give it a scrape and all these little tiny sections should remove themselves. Yep, nice and clean. I know, we shouldn't do, do it towards ourselves, that's dangerous, so let's put it down. Hopefully we won't knock the camera over. Ah, uh, and we knocked the camera over as we said that. <laughs> All right, y'all. Cheers. I want to get back to getting this cleaned up. Okay, here we go. So, this is Ultimaker's Cura software. It's partnered with Thingverse. You can see I have a few different printers. We're in the S3, S1 Plus. This is what I was talking about. I still have this factory nozzle head, which is 0.4, but we will upgrade this machine to have 0.6 next. All right, so in my settings, I've already made some minor adjustments. I played with the Z seam settings, but let's open a file. And we got more objects for fingerboarding. We go to my downloads believe I think we should print let's see we'll go with not more fingerboarding hmm let's see let's see we have copper in it now Need a moment to decide. Give me a minute, we'll figure it out. Tune right back. All right, so I've opened my Cura Ultimator Maker software, excuse me, and I'm gonna print this moon planter. It's self-watering. So I open the file and it's placed in my slicing software. So now I press, well, let's grab the memory card from the printer. Boom, here's my memory card. Zing, move the Ferrari over and my laptop over. Put the memory card into my machine. Boop. And now I'm gonna press slice. See how long it processes for. Slicing, slicing. Let's go, slice, slice, slice. This print, according to the computer, will take us approximately According to this, one day, 16 hours and 34 minutes. It's a $47 cost to me. So, 3D Moon Planter, we save to removable drive. Eject. All right. Next, we put the memory card back into my machine. File saved, eject safely. There we go. So in this, it goes in like this, upside down, like so. And now our the bed has been leveled, which means it's trammed, flat, square. And I press print. And then I press 3D Moon Planter, and then I press play. And then I go here to my nozzle temperature. We go nozzle temp, hold on, nozzle temp, 200 degrees. And the hotbed we want at 60 degrees, and that creates adhesion. That's what the first layers of the prints turn out to be when you start a file. So this bed will heat up to about 60 degrees. The fan's kicking on. Yes, they're stringing. We gotta clean the models up. 
And now we heat up and we wait for it to start. Oh, let's click back. And uh, as you can see, the nozzle's heating up, the bed's heating up, and we're, we're started. Let's go.